Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson is from the Song of Solomon. The voice of my beloved, Look, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing in at the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For now the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. The fig tree puts forth its figs, and the vines are in blossom. They give forth fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. The word of the Lord. Let us read responsively by verse Psalm 45. My heart is stirring with a noble song. Let me recite what I have fashioned for the king. My tongue shall be the pen of a skilled writer. You are the fairest of men. Grace flows from your lips, because God has blessed you forever. Your throne, O God, endures forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate iniquity. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you 
with all the oil above your fellows. All your garments are fragrant with myrrh, aloes, and cassia, and the music of strings from ivory palaces makes you glad. On your right hand is the queen, adorned with the gold of Ophir. A reading from the letter of James. Every generous act of giving, with every perfect gift, is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in the mirror. For they look at themselves and, on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and ponds, kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, 
teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called to the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile. But the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. If you haven't picked up on the theme running throughout the gospel lesson today, and actually there are a couple of them, but the one that was most apparent to me was this idea of traditions. Um, and before I develop, dive much further into that, I want to take a moment and say, speaking of traditions, this idea that I invoke the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and it ask, may I speak in their name, um, is a bit of a tradition, but it's also is a check and a reminder to me and hopefully to you as well that this is not something that we take lightly. It's something that we do with thought, intent, and that we are asking to be checked in our discernment. So, where am I going with all this? Well, we're getting into uh, the season of, some, of, of, of traditions. Now, the, full, the year in, in its entirety is full of traditions. For many of us, it's been as we've been away, perhaps at places at the lake or at the shore or things that we do with our family during vacations, innumerable others. But the ones that I think about are the ones that where we, um, we have to make accommodations sometimes because we're coming together with people for maybe the first time in what has been a long-standing family tradition. So think of the first uh, um, Thanksgiving you shared as if you were, uh, if you ever experienced it uh, uh, with a spouse or a new boyfriend or girlfriend going to uh, another person's house for the first time for Thanksgiving. And maybe some sense of trepidation because they do things differently. They make their stuffing from a package as opposed to from scratch. They don't, they use sausage or they use oysters. All these things, these things are near and dear and ingrained in us from a lifetime of practice. But we come up when we experience someone else's understanding with uh, another idea. This is not perhaps exactly the way we do it. And I can imagine at least two outcomes. One of which is, well, okay, this is different. This is cool, this is fine. I can survive this once every other year. <laughs> Or it's to embrace it in its entirety, said, where, where has this been all my life? But there are differences. And we, again, they come from common stories. You know, Thanksgiving Day. We know that the origin story, at least the mythology around Thanksgiving Day that cropped up in, uh, in New England around Plymouth Rock and the Pilgrims and the Indians. Um, and so there is some basis, some story, but then there is the individual interpretation and adaptation that takes place over the years. And it becomes something different. Suddenly, American football might be the particular focus of the day as opposed to the meal together. Who knows what it can look like, but it can be something different. Now, I point this out because this is, in essence, what is happening in this gospel lesson. 
And Jesus is, is chiding, and I do say chiding, but not, he's not seriously beating them up, but he is chiding a little bit. The Pharisees, because they have taken the simple commandment of God, and even if you want to extend it to the entire Ten Commandments, and they have come up with this permutation of variations and alterations and interpretations just to cover another base or to, raise, to cut, touch base on something that no one's ever considered. And in doing so, they have lifted up their interpretations, their, the legal codes that they've created, and they don't bear much resemblance to the origin story, to the real, the roots. It's a bit like that Thanksgiving or, or Christmas or Easter, whatever year at the celebration you say, celebrate with family and extended family. Things are different and we need to accommodate, perhaps. But that has, in fact, in their minds, at least according to Jesus, is chiding, that has become the rule. That has become the law. That has become what we should follow. Let's face it, the Pharisees are getting up there, getting in an uproar over the fact that some, some of the disciples haven't washed their hands. You know, in their interpretation, that's absolutely necessary. Is it life or death? Hmm. Probably not. And Jesus, in his direction and correction, is to point directly to Scripture. Now, this is intentional, and I love this idea, because as opposed to saying, this is what I think, and I'm right, which I think many of us have probably heard at some point in our lives over the years, it's not. He points back to the origin stories. He points back, in this particular case, to Isaiah where God indicates his dissatisfaction with the people who are just going through the motions as opposed to internalizing and living out the law. Going through the motions allows us to take liberties with our interpretation and how we tell a story as opposed to focusing on the fact of the original story. And Jesus points back to scripture. Now, in the Episcopal Church, we have this triad, if you will, uh, of, of, of expressions that describe our approach to worship in the Anglican Communion. Scripture, tradition, and reason, often referred to as the three legs of the stool of our worship, liturgy. Um, I like the description of the, tri the tri um, tricycle, the holy tricycle. You've got two small wheels and you've got a big wheel. Tradition, and reason, they are the small wheels. They are tools, they are helpful, they have value. We should always take them in regard. But the principal driver, the big wheel with the pedals, the one that gets going, is scripture. The primacy of scripture. So when we start parsing hairs and debating fine points, what we need to remind ourselves is Jesus himself points to scripture. Go back to the scripture. Take it as it is. Don't try to refine and challenge and interpret it and make it what you want it to be. Take it as it is. So, what does that mean to us? I think as we come upon these occasions where we will with extended family and new members of family added and the dynamics changing, we will find these pressures to accommodate or, or integrate or, or tweak things. But before we do that, may we remember that it is the real, the origin story that counts. And that we should focus on that. And Jesus always points to the origin story. We can count on that. So if there's ever any doubt, all you have to do is turn to the gospel. And Jesus, if he would have us know nothing else about the gospel, he points out two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. And then he throws in, love one another as I have loved you, if there's any question or doubt about how we love our neighbor. All else is cliff notes.
standing, let us affirm our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, one being with the Father, through him all things were made. And for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord in your mercy. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We pray for those in harm's way especially Michael, Ian, John, Scott, and Russell, and all essential workers. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation, especially Kay, Al, Dick, Elmer, Letty, Carol, Dennis, Gail, Jackie, John, Marilyn, Lindsay, Lillian, Dee Dee, Dixie, Evelyn, Lee, Jean, Karen, Lexi, Sandra, Nancy, Bill, Rod, Joan, Ginger, Terry, Paula, Malcolm, and Bill. We also pray for all those infected with COVID-19 and their caregivers. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Gracious Lord of infinite mercy and infinite healing, we ask your mercy upon all those we have named here this day, that they and we may all grow in stature and awareness of your presence and love and healing in our midst. In Christ's name we ask.
Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done in our behalf. Forgive and restore and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated, if you have not already. <laughs> so rather than going through detailed announcements, I am going to point out to you again that you have uh, this flyer in your bulletin. It goes in some detail about all the upcoming changes that are going on and uh, events that are coming our way. And speaking of which, though, there is one that I believe someone might, might choose to elaborate on. Linda, would you like to? So this week, each of you should have received a mailing from the church, and in it was a Rally Sunday flyer. Um, it's going to be a really great day. The choir is going to be singing, and Dr. David Saunders will be playing, and there's going to be a group from the, sorry, could look at my notes, the Toledo Alliance of Performing Arts. So it's going to be a really special service. And then afterwards, we're going to be out front, and we've invited two food trucks to come, and there'll be the ministry fair. So call your St. Mike's friends and invite them to join you. Call your neighbors. Um, we have a really great fall planned with programming. And on those, there's two notes that are important for you to know right now, is there's going to be a book club dinner club. And the first one is September 18th. And the book is um, Making Rounds with Oscar, which is a wonderful book about a Rhode Island assisted living center and a cat and um, what that cat taught them. And the dinner will be at our house. So anybody who'd like to do that might want to start reading the book. And then October 9th and 10th, we have planned an all parish event. And it's for anybody in the parish who wants to come. And you can make of it what you want to make of it. We have um, hired an amazing facilitator who's really well known. And she'll be leading some thought discussion. And she and Foster will be available for anybody who wants one-on-one -on -one time. Um, there is a myriad of outdoor activities or art activities. And it's really, you can do what you want to do while you're there. So, oh, and I should mention, there is a farm. And the meals are amazing. And I, it's really, it's farm to table. And the other thing is, all the facilities are brand new. So I'm not asking you to go to a cabin and in the woods, and it's really a beautiful place. So I hope you all will seriously consider coming. And again, your St. Mike friends who haven't seen in a while, you might want to give them a call too. But we do need registrations by September 25th. So I hope you guys will all think about coming. Thanks. Thank you. And I will add one thing, if I may, too, that if you are aware of someone who, for whom the uh, cost of attending may be an impediment, um, please let them know and let me know that um, scholarships are available for those who need them. Uh, so we really do want everyone to participate who is available. Are there any? Yes, Justin. Good morning. Um, just a quick announcement about the handbell choir that we will be meeting in the choir room after the service. Thank you.
observation. I have, um, I have changed, if you haven't already figured it out or gotten a, an email from my auto reply, I've changed my day off, my day of Sabbath rest from Monday to Friday. And that began this past week. And this is an experiment to sort of see how that works, if it dovetails a little more smoothly into the schedule and life of the parish. So there is that. If there are no other announcements for the good of the order, then walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. And the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ.
Standing as you are able, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, Send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. Amen to you and the Holy Spirit. Be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.